Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, we are going to be talking about Pretender Creation for Airmore, and specifically Pretender Creation for the game I'm about to, to uh, start. It hasn't started yet, so this is going to be pre-game thoughts on Pretender Design. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts later. Um, the game we are starting, which you will soon be watching, is... Uh, it's called Radiation Therapy, and that is because we're going to be having every Broken Nation pre-assigned into the game for people to sign up for. And then some slots where we're like, there's not enough Broken Nations, people just pick who they think is strong. So here are the nations that are going to be in the game. Um, now you can say, you know, you know, why wasn't Micklin included or whatever, and, you know, it's fine, Micklin didn't make it. Or, you know, why wasn't Ulm included? Ulm's not going to be in there. So this is not like the definitive list of who is the strongest nation, but ever, but all the nations which everybody absolutely agrees is cancer is in there. So, um, let's go down the list. We've got, uh, Satis is present. They're cancer with the, uh, disease dominion. Who, who doesn't like invading Satis? We've got, uh, Pangea who is present with dryad cancer. We've got Jotunheim who is present with ill winter and other, uh, Nifl Jotun kind of shenanigans. We have Bandarlog, who is not really cancerous, but uh, they wanted to join. Uh, it's I mean, it's a good nation, but I would not call Bandarlog cancerous. Uh, and then we have Ashdod, who is cancerous because you can do these nasty Anakites that basically kill everything. Uh, we have Nazca, which if you haven't been living under a rock, you know that Nazca is absolutely horribly, horribly cancerous. Uh, next up, uh, we have End, who is probably not cancerous, but we don't really know yet. I think the End meta is still evolving, and we'll have to see how it does in games. But I think it has the, the potential to be cancerous once somebody really fully figures it out. So maybe that'll be this game. Next up, we have Naba, and Naba is considered to be one of the stronger middle-aged nations, and kind of cancerous also. Um... Not the same kind of cancer as other things, but, I mean, they're basically elves. They're like elves on roids, in a way, because they have glamour, they have stealthy, um, they have a lot, they have really powerful battle magic. Yeah, they can do a lot of things. Uh, and then we have Relay, who's in the game, and they can do banishment communions, and other thing, just because we're playing Airmore. Um, oh, did I not mention... Is Airmore not on this list? Um, anyway, yeah, they, because we're playing uh, Airmore, we should mention Naba has access to almost all the good battlefield wipes, like Earthquake, Wrathful Skies, Firestorm. They can do it all to kill all my Skellingtons. Uh, next up, we have Relay, who can do Banishment Communions, and they have Mind Blasters. There's a bunch of, and they have Assassins. So yeah, there's a bunch of ways they're going to mess with us. So, uh, and then we have Yes, which is uh, very balanced sea ponies. So all in all, you look at all this and you're saying, these are, in, in no way would you argue this is a weak set of nations. These are all very, very strong nations that are in the game. The only one I'm not sure about is End, but everything else very strong. End, I think, can be strong, but I just don't understand the nation well enough. And we are going to be playing Dominions 5 Airmore, which is in no way, shape, or form Dominions 4 Airmore. Oh, and Scalaria is in the game. And Scalaria is the real Airmore. Scalaria is better than Airmore at basically everything. The only thing that they don't have sacred undead they can get. Um, but they're going to have a ton of money and at more undead than me. And they are going to have better mage support. And they can do banishment communions. And then late game, they can steal all of my shit with undead mastery and stuff. So, yeah, uh, Scalaria, hopefully people kill him before they kill me, um, and hopefully he doesn't get big, because if he's big and I'm medium size or something, or, I mean, even if we're the same size, if we're the same size going into the late game or whatever, I, I think there's no way I have a chance of, of winning. So that is, those are the nations in the game, and that will inform our decisions, uh, our decision on, uh, what, what kind of bless we need. Let's actually, I'm going to pull that list back up again um versus scalaria uh, mr checks are going to be kind of important we don't like they can still wither bones us which doesn't have an mr check but really things like undead mastery they will just wreck us 
Um, and then they also are an astral nation, so the, the MR is going to be nice for not getting our commander sniped with uh, with Solsley and the like. Um, coming down, I probably should have done this as we went through the, the list the first time. But uh, coming down, we've got Satis, which I'm actually a pretty good matchup against most all the game until it gets pretty late. Like late game, uh, I do have to worry about... Um, Undead Mastery again with these guys. But in the mid game, this will probably be like one of my better matchups. I don't have to worry about the disease. The Skelly Spam's not a big deal. Um, they have Assassins, which can be annoying. But I probably am okay equipped to deal with those. Anyway, Pangea is a bit of a tricky thing because like Swarm Assassins aren't super scary to Undead Nations because. You just put a little bit of armor on your troops and the swarm can't really hurt. But with a bit of cleverness, I'm pretty sure those assassins can still uh, still kill almost all my commanders. Um, so we'll see. Pangea is not a great matchup, but also not a horrible matchup. Um, yeah, nothing... I'm, I'm not super worried about that. Uh, coming down, Jotunheim... Um, their Scrotty can probably kill unlimited amounts of undead with very basic research, uh, including my Lictors. So that's, of course, a concern. Um, and we don't have any magic to counter them, which, you know, normally you kill Scrotty with magic stuff. So that's pretty bad. The armies, though, I'm not as worried about. So, like, I'm more worried about Scrotty and not worried, very worried about armies. Uh, because we should be able to deal with the giants and stuff. And, I mean, they can communion up and... Like, they're, they're pretty good. Um, like, they have pretty good magic they can do. I mean, they can do a lot of things, but it's not... All their stuff's kind of expensive. Not all of it, but a lot of it. You know, like, they do have the Vetti Hags, which are pretty nice. But a lot of the good mages, like the Gaija, is pretty expensive. I don't know. They're good, though. Anyway, we'll see. Jotunheim's not, like, a phenomenal matchup, but it's not a horrible one. Um, Bandar Log... Uh, astral power means we definitely can't use our... I mean, Vettiha, Jotunheim has enough Astral too where I probably can't ever use Dusk Elders. Bandal, I definitely can't. And I have to worry again about them killing all my stuff. But if they don't have the right tech online, we can potentially kill them. So I don't know. I think this is like a timing thing. Maybe like early we kill them. Mid-game they kill us. Late game, I don't know. Uh, Ashdod depends on what the Bless is. Uh, but... Here we have to worry really about super combatants, kind of like with the Scrotty. They can just have stuff that are, we're they're immune to, like we're they're immune to our troops. Um, the giant rush itself could also be devastating, um, but I think a lot of that's going to depend on kind of what the blesses and all of that business. But Ashdod, I'm mostly worried about from a super combatant perspective. Uh, coming down Nazca. Nazca I'm actually an okay matchup for because typically Nazca has lots of very killy stuff and they're going to overwhelm you. Well, we have a bunch of chaff, so we're typically going to have the numbers advantage. And numbers advantage versus flyers is going to matter a lot. But given enough time, Nazca can have more undead production than I can even. Or about the same because they get uh, undead reanimators and they're going to have flyers and they're going to have their slaves. The Nazca match, I think, depends a lot on how the game state is, but it's not super bad for me. Um, they do have also troops that have uh, undead killing weapons, like these guys. The Sun Mace, three times damage versus undead, so good luck trying to like keep my Lictors alive. Um, next up, we have End. End isn't going to have a lot of Astral. They're going to have a lot of Priests, so Banishment. I think End is a matchup that can go either way, though. Um, I think this actually is probably one of the better matchups for me, uh, but hard to say. Um, Naba, Naba is a timing matchup. Uh, I think earlier, it depends how, there's a few things you have to worry about. One is we have to worry about thugs with like Fire Shield and Phoenix Pyre and stuff. And that's going to be a threat pretty much probably starting turn 15, 20 through the rest of the game. That's going to be tricky for me to deal with. Um, the good thing is, versus like hordes of undead, air thugs typically don't do terribly well, like because they're relying when they have earth though, which like all the Malika do, 
Um, and then we start getting problems where I really can't kill them. Like they literally can just kill all of my dudes. So uh, we'll, we'll have to cross this river when we get there. But one of the problems with Nabaz thugs, the other problem is they can all do Firestorm, they can all do Wrathful Skies, and then they can do Earthquake. And all these things are going to wreck my day. So Nappa, in my opinion, is probably, especially as the game goes medium to late, is one of my worst matchups. It's really bad. But early, before they have thugs, so they're kind of maybe a rush target for me. Just go over there and mess their shit up. Because they're going to be so good against me in the, the middle and late game. Uh, anyway, that is Naba. Next up, we have Relay, which I already talked about Relay. But basically, we're talking, they've got Death Astral Access too, so they can be doing Wither Bones. They can be doing, or they've got Assassins. If you watch my first uh, Airmore Let's Play, it's basically half the game is me fighting Relay. Uh, and at times it's infuriating. The good news is I, and I fought Relay so many times since then. I've got Relay's number. Like I, I understand Relay better than almost all the Relay players because I fought them so many GD times. Um, but that said, it is a strong national matchup for Relay against Airmore. So there's definitely a Relay favored matchup, and I would like to not go to war with them, if possible. Um. But yeah, anyway, that's that. And then uh, Yis, or Yis, or however you say it, um, a little tricky. They have Astral Access on for their land mages. Um, they have Thugs who can Cloud Trapeze, but they're cap only. Um, and then the Morvark Knights. Morvark Knights are pretty good. They're going to tear through uh, basically unlimited amounts of undead. So we need to think about answers to all these things. So anyway, all that said, we talked about the nations that are in the game. How do we design a pretender to survive this? Let's pull up the pretender creation screen. I've got a bunch of pre-designed ones. We'll pull them up, but I just want to, we're going to theory craft a bit. I need, what I, the bless is so important for Airmore. I was watching somebody else's kind of summary or analysis of Airmore and they're like, the bless isn't that important. Like, yeah, in Dominions 4, you used to be able to hell bless, but now you can't, so it's not even that important anymore. Excuse me, the, the bless is extremely important. Why is it extremely important? Because, you know, I mean, sure, having a pretender that's useful is important too, so I don't want to discount that. Um, but all those different threat vectors I just talked about in all those nations, you're not going to have any fucking research to speak of. I mean, you'll have some, but mostly it's going to be stuff your pretender god does um for a while anyway and it's not going to be much how are you going to deal with all those threat vectors in the mid game with the tools that you're given and you're not given many tools like how do you do i i we the the ocean's too deep the river's too wide the mountain's too tall all right we're not going to be able to deal with the amount of design points we have with all the threat factors, it's just too much. Like, okay, we're going to, we need to worry about firestorm. We need fire resistance 10 or fire resistance 15. We need to worry about raffle skies. We need shock resistance 15. Problem with all that is like, you get that on your sacreds, but your undead hordes are still going to die. Right. And then your sacreds might route. Um, you, and then the battle's lost, right? Um, how are we going to deal with super combatants? Well, we need to get magic weapons and we need to stack strength on our sacreds. Okay, but then what are you going to do when the battlefield wipes come? Well, I guess we'll die. <laughs> you know? Um, okay, well, we talked about the battlefield wipes. What are we going to do to, like, to, to wither weapon spam? Or withering, uh, withering, bo wither bone spam, you know? be blasting our troops with wither bones how are we going to survive all of that you know the, our lictors are just going to get blown up doesn't matter whether their mr is high whether their resistances are high none of that matters it's just going to delete you know 15 lictors at a time I'm sorry you're just gonna die that's I mean, <laughs> you can't you you actually cannot counter that it's just uh part of life what are you going to do when you know soul slay and mind blast and all of that garbage comes out 
and banishment um and then later in the game all the other i'm listing stuff that has mr checks and what are you going to do against stuff that has you know like undead mastery well i'll I'll take mr in my plus but you wanted magic weapons too right because what if a thug or super combatant comes out with mist form and invulnerability or body ethereal you know i can i'm just listing all the things and like normally like you could say this problem exists for every nation in some ways it does so like if you try to have a bless on any nation that is going to protect you from all angles you'll fail but most nations have lots of other tools for which to solve a problem and dominions is a game of hard counters like i was saying so if you don't have the tool in your tool basket and the hard counter comes out to the only things you can do you just lose until you can come up with the counter the cool thing about dominions is there's a ton of counters out there so there's always really interesting innovative ways to counter stuff the problem with airmore is because we have horrible 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 research horrible 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 magic diversity uh, our mages we can't use and we only have you know our pretender god in addition to that we don't get to use almost all the cool tools to counter stuff so anyway i i've i've labored a lot on it but this is the dilemma of you can't have everything like you know i can't have magic weapons and magic resistance i'm not, i don't have enough pretender points to do the astral i mean you could well, let's do let's do that well this is if you did that, this is what you would have to do. We're going to go magic weapons. I mean, we could do like minor magic resistance. It wouldn't be too expensive. We'll do major too, because why not? And we'll get quickness, because that's the other thing that comes with the oracle. That's so good. And quickness did get buffed. Now, with, with Airmore, you're always going to tank all your scales. You typically want to take cold. You could go heat if you felt so inclined. I would not recommend it. And you almost want to go always go luck. Um, and you can see we are out of design points for a bit. But we could go dormant. And go eight. Or seven and pick something else. I think we just do eight. Or we can get one more. We go magic two. You could do something like this. Now, would, what, would this be good? This is not a bad bless. Um, you're going to get... You're going to have an Astral 8 dude, which is useful, because Astral is always useful. Astral is something you can site search well. Um, so you can potentially, if you get lucky with sites, have a good Astral income. And High Astral can fix a lot of problems. Um, and then High Water is nice. So this is okay. This is not a bad build. But, oh, and let's talk about the virtue. There's actually a lot of virtues in this build. One is it's going to be hard to counter our lictors, like things like fog warriors and mist form and, um, you know, uh, body ethereal. They're not going to help. So this is, this actually is going to be the best bless that I'm going to show you uh, at dealing with super combatants. Because with magic weapons and that battle axe swinging twice and then stacking three of those guys a tile, they will delete almost any super combatant. And things like, were you like going to try to lure attack density with mind shields? Not with this. This magic resistance is going to help counter that too. So this is like anti-super combatant. Additionally, you're going to get the plus two attack and defense from quickened units. Um, so you're going to have better combat stats. And that attacking twice per square, you're going to kill through, you're going to chew through other units more quickly. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because all the other things that are going to kill you. Uh, now, what are the things that are going to kill you? Like all the battlefield wipes. They are going to kill you over, you know, as the battle goes on. The shorter the battle is, the better it is for you in those circumstances. So this is a build where you want to have short battles where you're just going to run at them and try to kill everything before they can nuke you down with mages. And this is probably one of the better ways to do that. What is it going to be bad against? It's going to be bad as soon as people get like mass protection uh, and army of gold, which slows the battle down. When the battles get slowed down, 
your quickness isn't going to matter that much. I mean, it's still going to be nice because your lictors are going to hit hard and hopefully they'll still be chopping through stuff, but much more slowly, right? Uh, and then that's going to give the mages all the time in the world they need to just hit you with wither bones. Um, so basically, if people can get enough chaff up in front of you for the mages to do their work or for the battlefield enchantments to do their work, you're going to be in trouble. This will also be, I guess, kind of okay against things like Undead Mastery, because you're going to have the magic resistance built in here. So I, I would say this is a, this was actually probably one of the better blesses, so it's kind of funny we did it together. But you can see we don't have the opportunity to fix a lot of the other problems that we have. Um, like, we haven't really done too much for magic diversity. We've only gotten two paths. Um... And this coming online dormant, so we're going to have a slightly slow expansion. But dormant is fine, by the way. You can do it. You're just not going to be enormous at the beginning. Uh, and then, yeah, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll, we'll save this here. I, I actually kind of like that. We'll go ahead and look at the other ones. So the aggressiveness, like the fightiness of that build with quickness, is a, is a feature virtue in and of itself. Um, because it is going to, by being aggressive, you are, that is one way to kind of get it mage is because you're just going to kill the front line too quickly. Um, now we're just going to go through the list because right, I've got a lot. So here we have, and a lot of these are going to be similar because I was, this just shows you kind of the, the different patterns I was going in. This is dormant, reforming flesh, resilient five. You're going to see Resilient 5 on a lot of these blesses. The reason is, is because our Knights of the Unholy Sepulchre are 6 HP. And to get uh, 2 regen per turn rather than 1 from Reforming Flesh, we need to get up to 11 HP. And so 6 plus 5 is 11. So that's the reason you're going to see 5 a lot. Uh, getting up that extra threshold is going to be important for the Knights. It's going to double their HP regen. Uh, for the Lictors, you only need plus one. They start off at 20 HP. So even just getting plus one HP will get them up from two regen a turn to three, which is a 50% improvement, so pretty good. But the other four is a little wasted on them. Uh, Fire Shock Resistance is going to be kind of helpful in dealing with... Um, uh, in dealing with... And actually, now that I'm looking at it, in dealing with, like, uh, you know... Firestorm and, and Wrathful Skies and those sorts of things. But now that I'm looking at it, the other way to deal with that is, of course, having Blood Vengeance up. Because Blood Vengeance, anytime somebody does a battlefield wipe, which is like one of the things we're like going to be very, very weak against, um, this will destroy them. Anytime somebody casts Wither Bones, oh, you hit all my lictors with Wither Bones, now you're dead. So it removes a lot of hard counters and turns them into soft counters. Now, do I want people Wither Bones in my lictors? Well, I mean, not really, not, not honestly. I'd rather just have my lictors alive and get them into melee. But if you're going to wither bones me, at least we can try to blow you back up. Now, if you stack in our gear on the people wither bonesing and you, you know, do all this other stuff, you can kind of live sometimes. But even then, if you, if your mages are killy enough doing the right things, they're still going to die. Like battlefield wipes, it almost doesn't matter how much MR you stack up, unless it's like a super combatant chassis. They're going to get wrecked. Um, so that's that. Um, but there's some anti-synergy here. Like there's anti-synergy between the shock, the fire shock resistance and the blood vengeance, because we actually kind of want the damage to trickle in to the, to the lictor. So it will turn around and kill the casters of uh, the battlefield wipes. Uh, instead, it may be better if you do something like this to pick something else for, for earth or to go all the way up to earth six and get plus four strength which will go a long way to improving your lance charge, and it's going to count as... Uh, I think it'll count as five more damage for the Lictors instead of four, because it's two-handed. I think it's one... Like, you get an additional 25%. Uh, but notice, we don't have... Like, we're going to be pretty weak at dealing with super combatants. Super combatants in general are going to regenerate, so even if they kill something every turn and, like, take some damage, they're going to also have pretty high at Mar. They're going to regenerate it back up. They're not going to be killing stuff fast enough for Blood Vengeance to mess them up. Uh, and there's nothing here that makes our guys more killy. So this is a problem. 
Uh, and I haven't decided, I'm leaning towards one build, but I haven't decided yet. So we're going to talk through it and maybe it'll kind of clarify things in my mind as we go. Um, next, we have this uh, guy, the, the Demi Lich. And this is an interesting mix. It's got quickness with reforming flesh, resilient, and blood surge. So these guys are going to be hard to kill. Um, they're going to have quickness, so they're going to chew through things quickly. Um, and then they're going to have blood surge. Now, unfortunately, we had to take misfortune, which I hate misfortune. So I don't think I, I want to sign up for a long form game with misfortune three and no income. Um, that might be too much for me. But we've got magic two at least. Blood surge I'm also not super sold on. While it will help us chew through normal troops a bit quicker, which is nice with something like quickness, um, it's also kind of hot garbage because the things we have to worry about killing we're not going to trigger on. Like when somebody sends a super combatant in, blood surge doesn't count. And that's the time when we really need that plus strength. So not actually super sold on this. I don't think I'd take this. Um, next up, we have Queen Hilda. Now, this is the build I was leaning towards. This is uh, a gray one, which means when they come out dormant, I'm going to get three of them, which is nice, because then I can use them to, like, first of all, spend all my hoarded up death gems really quickly, because I've got three casters who are death mages. I can twice born them and then send them off to do different things. Um... And one of the ways to bypass Blood Vengeance is with, uh, like, Soul Slay. Uh, not Soul Slay. Um, uh, enslaving. So, like, either Undead Mastery or Enslave Mind or stuff. And uh, getting higher magic resistance will reduce the effectiveness of that. So that's one of the thoughts. The, the defense is actually pretty anti-synergistic with this. I mean, it's nice because we'll have more defense and I mean like four defense and melee is pretty huge um it's pretty huge uh especially for the knights who have really high base defense so like it's good but it it's not contributing towards something we really really want like on one hand we're already defensive and if things are going to be hitting us we're going to be returning the damage so fine what I really want like, what is this weak to? This is weak to super combatants. So people send in super combatants, what are we going to do? Defense is not going to help. So I'm not sold. I do like the gray one uh, rainbow chassis. Like, I like it because we can have them out doing different things, and they're all going to be useful. We can have one out doing nature things. We can have one out doing, you know, astral things. And then the other one's just going to be a... Uh, a water death person, so maybe they'll be doing something else. Um, and then potentially, if we wanted to blood hunt, like in the late game, uh, when I have the luxury of, of research uh, to, to maybe go down blood, we could send the blood one off to blood hunt in some non, and because she'll blood hunt really fast, in our not like in a non population depleted part of our empire. But, I mean, that's kind of silly, actually. That's not something you would build a pretender around. But Blood Vengeance is pretty good. So, this is one option. And the more I talk about it, the less inclined I am to take it, but I'm not sure. Here's a different one. So, this is what, ha what happens if we go reforming flesh and we combine it with quickness. Well... Um, there's a few things. One is we have to go really low on Dominion, Dominion 5, which I think if we looked at Queen Hilda, she was at least 6. So 5 is getting into, like, the super low area. Um, and we don't have Blood Vengeance. So now we're, like, sort of tanky with the Reforming Flesh, and we're sort of killy. This is going to do better against Super Combatants, um, but not great against Mages. Like, Mages are not going to, like, withering, wither bone spam is just going to kill these guys. They don't care about reforming flesh. The quickness is going to be good at chewing through things, but wither bones would still kind of kill them. I don't know. I'm not really sold on this. Um, the nice thing is all these guys that come out are going to be death three and then water five. So they're going to be really strong water mages, which is something. Uh, but not sold on that. But anyway, we're, you can see we're oscillating around like different varieties of 
similar things. Now, this is a different take on it. This is like going full rainbow. So the nice thing about this build is you're going to be getting really good path access, right? So this is going to fix a lot of the magic diversity Airmore has. And because they're all on different mages, you can have them off doing different things. Um, but the attack skill, the swiftness, minor shock resistance, the defense skill, um, again, defense is really just because we start off with some water, but this may not be the best value. Fire shock resistance, uh, magic resistance, reforming flesh. This is like a, a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, now, the problem with this is that we, we're still not very killy, so we're vulnerable to super combatants. We're going to be less vulnerable to mages zapping us with, you know, like fire elementals we're less vulnerable to, or, you know, Thunderstrike we're less vulnerable to. You know, the, the MR negate stuff we're going to be less vulnerable to. But, like, they're still going to be able to kill, like, battlefield wipes are still going to mess our shit up. The only way to really counter battlefield wipes is to kill things quickly, like, very, very quickly, or to return the damage. And we're not really doing either of those. This is like a defensive bless. So I don't actually really, I like the paths. But I don't really like it. The only thing we have here that's killy is the attack bonus. And, but if you look at it, there's not a ton of options. Like we to get more killy, we really need quickness. Um, like if we want to kill things so fast that we don't have to worry about getting blood vengeance, we need quickness. So I think like all the builds that I'm settling on that I kind of like are either quickness or um, blood vengeance, and I feel like you need one or the other of them. You may not need both, because if you kill things so GD fast, the battlefield wipes may not matter. But if you don't kill things that fast, then the battlefield wipes are going to matter a whole lot, and then you need to be able to return the damage. Uh, okay, and then coming down, we have another variant. This one has hard skin, reforming flesh, berserker, and blood bond. This one is specifically set up for lictors, because things like berserker do not apply to your to your knights. But uh, your Lictors have five built-in base natural protection. So this is going to get them up to 10 base natural protection. Um, that combined with Berserker is going to get them up to 12 base natural protection, which is pretty high when you also add in their armor. They're going to be sitting at pretty good protection levels. Mix that in with Blood Bond and Reforming Flesh, and you've got yourself a very, very scary bunch of Lictors. The problem with that, though, is it's not very killy. It's a bit more killy because they're going to get plus two attack and plus two strength from the Berserker, which is definitely nice and will be noticed when fighting super combatants. The problem is like Wither Bones. You're going to get wrecked by it. The problem is this is a def mostly defensive-oriented build so that when Battlefield Wipes come out, it's still going to kill your whole army. And then Wither Bones will kill these guys. It doesn't really care about Blood Button that much. And it definitely doesn't care about your armor. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a thumbs down. But it, I, hopefully I'm at least sparking your, your imagination a bit. But even though I'm kind of oscillating in the, the same area. Here we've got Big Bird who ha, has Reforming Flesh. Uh, and then uh, Resilient and Blood Vengeance. So this is the this is one of the combos you can you know that we've seen a lot of times, but this is now on a good chassis. So uh, Big Bird is going. There's plenty of corpses for Big Bird to feast on, and this guy can easily get up to like a thousand, or you know like six or seven hundred HP over the course of a long game. Uh, and then you'd probably want to like empower him in some other paths later. Um, pretty, I, I would. I mean, this is pretty good. It doesn't have any of the other, like if you go for the, what's the value of going this versus like, if we look at the, the twice, basically the Queen Hilda variety. For this, we're going to get plus four defense and we're going to get MR with better paths and we're going to get three dudes and better research. I think I'm inclined to take that. But Big Bird, like if, I, if I'm put in a position where I need Big Bird to win, I feel like I'm kind of in trouble. So I don't know. I, I'm a little on the fence. 
but I think I have to ultimately go no with with Big Bird. Um, yeah, I don't know. This this, I, this is viable, though. Like, I think you could take this into a game. In a Blitz, this may be best. Uh, this is just a different version of Queen Hilda. And then here we have the one we just made. So... Um, what are some other things to consider? You can consider weapon blesses because they're going to be pretty good on the knights. The weapon blesses are going to be less good on the... Let, let's go ahead and make another one. Let's do full aggressive. Like full... Like we don't care about defense. We are just going to kill everything. So one of the things we want if we're going to go that route is we are going to want... Uh, we're going to want to stack strength and quickness is basically going to be the name of the game. So we're looking for water, high water, and like earth. So that was water astral. This is water astral fire, which would not be... This actually is not bad. That's actually not bad at all. We might come back to that. Because you also kind of want magic weapons if we're going to go full killy. Okay, this is water and earth. So this is another one we're going to consider. I think it's going to be those two. Okay, so let's first do this guy. Um... God, it's so expensive to get quickness. All right. It's actually not that bad. Okay, quickness. And if we sack one scale. I think this is maybe, uh, yeah, okay. This would be one option. The, the weakness of this is we don't have magic weapons. And there's 30 design points left over, which is going to tilt somebody. It's going to tilt me. But uh, there's nothing, this is a kind of awkward amount because we can't get another thing. I need to go down to seven and maybe get another thing. I think I would rather have eight dominion though. All right. Anyway, I think this is it. What is the beauty of this? You're going to knock the crap out of everything. Like these guys are just going to bulldoze through stuff. Um, super combatants you don't have to worry about. And the goal is just kill stuff before they kill you. Which is a, a virtue, I think. The problem is when Army of Gold comes out, you're kind of messed up, but at least you went plus two strength, which is going to help a good deal versus Army of Gold. Like, you're still going to grind it out, but I don't know. Maybe it'll be a little better. Okay. So we've got that guy. The other guy we were going to try, if we go, this is like full aggressive, is we're going to do the Titan of Forethought. Um, and this is, we're not going to be able to go nearly as high a Dominion on this guy. Uh, and that is because he's expensive too. Was there nobody else? Who down here had water? I think there's a water death one. That's just death. Yeah, okay, there's not really good options. Uh, okay, so if we get the Titan of Forethought, we'll we'll try this out. We need at least four for magic weapons. We have to go up to 10 here. You can, you don't have to go luck three guys, but it's gonna be one of your main sources of income. Uh, 
Oh man, isn't that tilting? Minus one. Um, burn, 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 baby. Um, oh, we don't have Earth. Okay, five actually is not bad. We get minor fire resistance. That'll be good of like fire elementals and stuff. And the firestorm is worse than wrathful skies. So you could do this. Um, this guy's also a super combatant in his own right, in a way. Uh, he's going to have really good defense. I think this gives you plus one defense. I'm not sure. I think it does, but I can't remember. Um, not a great super combatant, but he will be one. Uh, again, you have to worry about magic duel because four astral is really low. So you can't really use them like a bulldozer. You have to use them pretty tactically. Um, could this work? This could this could probably work. Um, but I feel like this runs into like a more hard... I mean, there's so many hard walls, though. But if you can't kill things, this is relying on killing things before the mages kill you. The thing is, you could have all of this. Like, all the blesses I've mentioned, you could basically combine that all into one and have everything into minions for it. Now you have, like, really hard choices to make. So anyway, this is another option. There's probably a lot more options out there. You can go check out some of the other Dominions guides for Airmore around. Um, but the thing is, is your bless matters a ton. And you better put some thought into it. And you need to know what the weaknesses and strengths are and how it's going to impact your timings. Which pretender should we use? Should we go with Queen Hilda? Should we go with one of our new fangled chassis that we have just made? I do not know. I kind of like this one. It's going to get mangled by Withered Bones, though. There's a lot of things that will mangle it. Fire shield. Ooh, I don't know, guys. We'll find out in the next episode where I will have chosen. So I will see you guys there.